Melanoma is a type of cancer commonly known to affect the skin. However, melanomas can also occur elsewhere in the body. Today we'll be exploring uveal melanoma, which accounts for only 4% of all melanomas, with approximately 2,000 Americans being diagnosed every single year. We're going to start with Lindsay in Denver, Colorado. Let's go behind the mystery. And at that time, he said, yes, Lindsay, this is extremely serious. You have a tumor actually detaching your retina. Um, you have eye cancer. After college, my high school sweetheart, Paul, and I moved to Colorado to begin our life together. And we have three kids, eight, 10, and 12. We are always on the move doing um, a variety of different things, um, constantly cheering on the kids and a variety of different activities. Um, we're also always planning and looking forward to our next adventure. So I started experiencing symptoms when I was 34 and the symptoms I was experiencing was blurry vision. I just assumed, oh, I need to get, you know, some prescription lenses. Uh, but one morning I woke up and had this like gut sensation that something was truly wrong. So I, I drove myself to the ER and at that time I was diagnosed with a detached retina. Lindsay was sent to a retina specialist who performed a dilated eye exam, which showed the cause of her detached retina and diagnosed her with uveal melanoma. I remember just falling to the floor. I, I couldn't process life. I couldn't process reality. And I remember just praying that I would wake up the next morning and my children would have their mom. We're at Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to meet with medical oncologist Dr. Marlena Orloff. Uveal melanoma is a rare subtype of melanoma. It is very different from skin melanoma, and it typically affects the tissues of the eye, including the choroid, the ciliary body, and the iris. Despite very effective treatments of the primary eye tumor, about half of patients will recur with metastatic disease, typically to the liver. Patients can present in a couple different ways. Some patients have a freckle in the eye, and a number of patients present with visual disturbance. This could be cloudy vision, loss of vision, and flashes and floaters, often related to an associated retinal detachment. Since many patients with uveal melanoma have their eye melanomas diagnosed on routine eye exam, not having had any symptoms, this speaks to the importance of getting an annual dilated eye exam by either an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. While we don't know what causes uveal melanoma, we are aware of a number of host risk factors that may increase one's risk of developing uveal melanoma. These include Caucasian ethnicity, being of Northern European descent, uh, fair eyes, light skin, and a very rare hereditary syndrome called BAP1 syndrome. I was in a really, really bad spot emotionally. All of a sudden I hear I have cancer and then I find out that I have the most e aggressive form of this cancer. After Lindsay's diagnosis, she was referred to an ocular oncologist, Dr. Peter Hovland, who outlined treatment options and scheduled her for a PET CT to test for metastatic disease. The good news came back that I had no metastatic disease, but it really put a lot of emphasis back on the eye. And so I chose uh, to do proton beam radiation. I then travel for my treatment, so I'm away from my, my family. So initially after the proton beam radiation, we were really hopeful. Um, we were seeing signs of the tumor shrinking. Unfortunately, I had lost all sight at that point. Um, so ultimately, you know, my mind went to a really, really dark place. I'm um, just processing um, what it was gonna be like or what my future was gonna be like, or, or even if I had a future. Once uveal melanoma is suspected, patients should be referred to an ophthalmologist with an expertise in ocular oncology. Due to its rare nature, patients should be referred to a specialty center. Once evaluated by an ocular oncologist, they will make the diagnosis and discuss treatment options. These treatment options may include plaque radiation, external radiation, such as proton beam, or nucleation, which is removal of the eye. 
For about a year and a half, I managed um, lots of radiation side effects. I was begging um, my doctors to remove the eye as soon as possible because the pain was so excruciating at that time. And we actually saw signs of the tumor regrowth. And as much as I processed and thought I prepared myself for losing an eye, no, no one can prepare yourself. Uh, for what, what you will go through. And ultimately that waiting game for the six to eight weeks until my prosthetic was made to actually you know, wanna look in the mirror again and, and to see myself. Coming up. Dropping to the ground again because this was the moment that I had prayed for four and a half years would never come. Welcome back. We're discussing uveal melanoma. Let's go back to Dr. Orloff to learn more about metastatic disease. After diagnosis and management of the primary tumor, patients should be referred to a medical oncologist to discuss options of surveillance. This can include MRIs, ultrasounds, and CAT scans to monitor for metastatic disease. Your doctor may obtain a small biopsy of your primary tumor to send for a genetic risk profile. Information obtained from the genetic risk profile will aid us in tailoring a specialized surveillance plan to monitor for metastatic disease. Once the metastatic diagnosis is made, there are various treatment approaches, including liver-directed therapy, immunotherapy, and clinical trials. Historically, the prognosis for metastatic uveal melanoma has been poor. However, just over the last five years, we've had more advancements in uveal melanoma than we had had in the many decades before. There have been advancements in the basic understanding of the disease, the epidemiology, and potential treatment options. I always said since the beginning, if I only lost my eyesight, or if I only lose my eye, I'm gonna be like the luckiest person in the whole entire world. Unfortunately, at about four and a half years, I got the report I prayed would never come in, metastatic melanoma uh, in my liver. Dropping to the ground again, because this was the moment that I had prayed for four and a half years would never come. And it was there. And at that time, I again worked really closely with my oncology team. And we collaborated with other oncologists across the country uh, to ultimately decide what was going to be the best um, treatment for me to ultimately treat those tumors. I'm hopeful for the future that we'll continue to expand our knowledge and be able to provide better treatment options for our patients. We've now developed two different types of registries to help further this effort. One is what we call an academic registry or a registry where physicians put in the information and the other a patient registry where patients can enter in their own data. The uveal patient community is amazing. They engage with each other, they engage with us as physicians, as researchers, and we can all work together towards finding better treatments for this disease. So I am um, a big advocate for um, the Melanoma Research Foundation and also Cure OM. This foundation has uh, ultimately been with me from day one. Um, not only me, but really my family and supporting us from day one and connecting us to different support groups, connecting us to you know, my, my ocular melanoma, uveal melanoma friends here in Colorado. Also their different walks, um, their annual galas that they host, you know, really, um, a big believer in supporting those events and those foundations to raise the critical funds to, to fund the research. I think our, our family uh, loves to continue to be social and, and to get out and enjoy the, the outdoors and really try to make sure that my disease isn't limiting me long term and cherishing every single moment because we, we never know what any day is going to bring. I've always said, you know, if there's options, there's hope. And ultimately, um, I've always had options, and that's always provided me a lot of hope. And the more options there are, the more hope that it can provide, not only to myself, but to the whole uveal melanoma community. For additional resources and support on uveal melanoma, visit these advocacy sites. And as always, you can visit our website, thebouncingact.com.